Hi everyone, Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Just did a video comparing residuals to standardized and studentized residuals and uh, did that in a non-technical way. And in this video I am going to, uh, this is related to the other video because I'm going to prove the following, that the variance of the residuals will not be constant even if the assumptions on about the classical regression model and the error terms are satisfied. And we do this in the matrix setting. So we have a regression model, which could be multiple simple linear regression model. Y is an n by 1 vector. And this Y is a continuous. And then we have X, which is a matrix, an n pi p matrix. Uh, beta is the uh, vector of coefficients. You've got p coefficients and then the error term, n by 1 vector. We're going to assume, and these are part of the assumption of a classical regression model, x is fixed to simplify the proof, but recall that x, depending on the type of data you've got, depending on which field of application you're applying this model to, x could be also stochastic. Uh, where we're conducting experiments in psychology or medicine, x can be fixed. This um, expected value of the error term is zero. The variance of the error term is constant, i.e. homoscedastic, as opposed to heteroscedastic, and the covariance between the error terms is zero. Uh, some books use a stronger assumption of independence, which implies then covariance is zero. Saying that covariance is zero, same, that same, same as saying that the correlation between the error terms is zero. Under these conditions, we show that the variance of the residuals is this thing, where hi is between zero and one. So notice that the variance of the residuals is constant only if hi is constant across all i's. i is going from 1 to n, n number of observations. Okay, uh, Otherwise it will be different. So even though the error term could be homoscedastic, your residuals here, the variance of them, are non-constant. And if you looked at the residuals, it looked, you, you might think, oh, there's heteroscedasticity when there isn't. But all depends on this term. And this h term for each uh, observations, 1 to n, is called the leverage point. And I'll do a separate video looking at this in detail. Why I use h subscript ii is because this h will be extracted from a matrix. So this will be the diagonal elements along, the, uh, along that matrix with row i and column i. If you want to simplify, if we, we can just use i to say the leverage point for observation i. Okay, so let's start the proof, stating the problem that we want. We want the variance of the residuals for each point i. In the matrix setting, we can see that the residuals, which is the vector from, uh, if I have to bother to write this thing down, residuals for each observation stacked in a column vector like this, right? So by definition of residual, it's observed value, so here's a vector of observed values minus a vector of here the fitted values, y hat. But from the model, y hat is same as beta x times beta hat. Now the least squares estimate of this thing, or the maximum likelihood of beta hat under uh, assumption of Gaussian errors, is going to be y minus, and then the formula we know should know pretty well. Beta hat, let's do it in different colors so you can see it. x transpose x inverse, x transpose y. Now using matrix algebra, we can see there's a kind of a common thing here, y and y. 
and when we multiply matrices, multiplying on the left and right, there's a distinction between them. So here we're multiplying the two terms by on the right. Okay. In other words, we take this on this one, that'll be on the right hand side, take this on this one over there. If I put y here, okay the first term will be fine, but then you'll end up with a y here and here is different to here. Okay, because in general uh, a times b is not always equal to b times a. Okay, now this pattern of this thing here, this term here, is quite common in regression analysis, a very important matrix. So we give it a name. Now in the metrics they call that P, typically use the notation P, but in other fields we use H to denote and I'm going to call it the hat matrix. So in other words, let's just rewrite this I minus H, so arms don't fall off by keep on writing that thing there. Y. How many rows and columns does this H matrix have? Well, just take the first one. You we've just said this N X is N by P. N by P is the first one, dot, 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 dot. and then the final one is X transpose, so it will be a P by N. In other words, X H matrix is a dimension N by N. Likewise, then the identity is also N by N, so you could put N there to denote it's N by N. Y is obviously, it will have told it's N by 1, so all matches. This thing here is N by N minus N by N. This thing is N by 1 not a pointless exercise, I'm doing this because if you multiply things wrongly then you're going to get dimensions that don't fit together. So here we're going to end up with a result, we know that the error, t error t um, vector of error terms, we know it's n by 1, right? So this should be n by 1. 